Guys, what's going on? Welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and I am joined by Lisa Downs, the filmmaker behind Life After Flash, and now a new documentary, Life After The Navigator. Lisa, welcome, and thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you for having me. And you can see a little trend in the films as well, the Life After series. Oh, yeah, I want to talk about that, but we should we should start this. So Life After Flash, that's your um, it's a it's a documentary about kind of the journey of Sam J. Jones after through Flash Gordon mm -hmm. and then after Flash Gordon. It also tells a lot of the story of the making of Flash Gordon as well. Yeah. So um, what fans I felt what fans wanted, it started off being a story about Sam. But because the crux of what, the direction that his life took really stemmed from set, you've got to talk about what happened on set if you're going to talk about why he ended up where he did. And then it just grew into, okay, well, if we're going to talk about things on set, we may as well talk to Melody, we may as well talk to Brian. And then I was like, well, I'm a fan, so I would want makings of stuff as well. And there hasn't really been a solid making of Flash Gordon, so that's how it grew into what it is today. Yes, and it, it it's such a such a human story because you know it's this uh, like with Flash Gordon, it's such an iconic pulp serial character, and that movie. So many of us grew up with that movie, and it's this iconic thing. And then you balance uh, as as the filmmaker, you're you're producing, you're doing, you're directing, you're <laughs> editing, right? So um, you do like this really great job of of kind of um showing iconic versus the man the man himself and uh it really it, humanizing is really the right term for it and and he's an, an interesting human being too he's such an interesting individual how did that come to be like how did that project originate uh i well funnily enough it's my first full-length feature so i always laugh when people say oh you edited it as well i mean that was the first time i edited something full length and i only edited it because we didn't have the budget to get an editor oh. um but i had been working in television for a while i had kind of been producing some factual entertainment shows and so i had been in the industry i had done a, a scripted film independently and a short documentary and so i had like done bits and pieces but i really wanted to do do a feature documentary and i didn't know what i knew it had to be something i was really passionate about but I just thought, you know what, I'll kind of keep my ears open and maybe it'll come to me. And then I had a friend who was working on this reality TV show in England, and I don't know if you have it in America, called The Jump, where it's celebrities do Olympic ski jumps. I mean, crazy, crazy show. Everyone gets injured and Sam was on the show. He got injured. He didn't actually air, but he was he ended up in hospital with his shoulder. Um, and I was talking to my friend and I, she told me, and I was gutted because Melody and Sam had actually been at a Comic-Con the month before and I had missed them. And I kicked myself because I love Flash Gordon. Um, so I just said, well, I wonder what happened to him. You know, we were at a party and you start chatting and you know, a couple of wines later. And I was like, let's do a documentary. So I pitched it to her. I put a, um, like a two page proposal together. She sent it to his then agent. I ended up Skyping him to pitch the idea, um, which was totally surreal. And then it kind of grew from there. And that was October 2014. I Skyped him to talk about it. And then January 2015, we ended up going to Laredo, Texas to start shooting. So everything that was shot, there's the interview where all his merchandise is out to the side of him. That was the very first interview we did. And it just grew from there. And he was so open with the project. And it took a few interviews to get to the more personal information about his life mm -hmm. uh, but he was just the most amazing human to work with because he is you know people say oh is he just for the camera no like he is what you see in the film what you see in flash gordon like he is so just he embodies that character um so it was really kind of fortuitous that it found me almost and you know i didn't i was like yeah it'll take a year let's crowdfund it'll take 12 months and i mean it took like four years i think to do but, but yeah it just kind of grew out of that conversation at a birthday party and it's you say it took you know four years and we're like here in america we've just gotten this as part of the arrow this is like the 4K super duper special edition and your documentary is included in this package I with a lot excited. of 
it, with a lot of supplemental features as well. There's like some behind the scenes stuff. I know there's some stuff with you kind of talking about how it came to be and it's wonderful. So it's just, it's like, I mean, this was just a few months ago that this came out here. So it's a continuing, like this is staying with you. Um, and it's wonderful. I should also say like, I'm, I'm a big fan of it. And, and I'm a big fan of what we're about to talk about is you, you bring the, there's like this empathy to it and he's so, um, relatable and human. And that, that is, uh, very much applicable to the next thing. It's like the the project after that, which is another life after, and it's life after the Navigator. We're talking about the F flight of the Navigator, which is a movie that, like my generation, like we grew up with this movie. This movie means so much to us, and we all wondered, like, what happened to Joey Kramer, the kid, and and, and then you see the headlines. Now you have a documentary called Life After the Navigator. Can you just tell us a little bit about what it is? I can, and when you hold that cover up, even I still get chills because it was such a part of my childhood. Like it's still really surreal that I've I just done got anything. chills too. I did. At anything related to the film, it's so strange that yeah. you know it's it's. I love it so much, and um, it was a magical it, movie, right? Because it was it was imagination, and it didn't have it, a lot of movies from that era had. Um, like the gritty more cynical look at something like goonies right goonies has a little bit of an edge to it but flight of the navigator was kind of wonder and it's like a day at epcot you know like it was about yeah. what could happen totally and you and i think it was around the era that films started to have characters that us at that age could relate to you yeah. know you wanted to be david's friend and you felt like you could go on these adventures and i was like desperate to be abducted by aliens i would like lie on the <laughs> grass in my garden going oh please like take me i want to go so i mean it was an amazing amazing film as you know so life after the navigator stemmed from again wanting to do another life after film i love the idea of i had a great childhood i love nostalgia i love these films from my childhood um and like many people like googled what happened to joe and at the time you know, you read his Wikipedia page and it was just unbelievable. I had no idea that he had gone through any of that. And what I think is really sad is you're so quick to judge a headline. Like, oh, another child star gone off the rails. Oh, that's a shame. But like, there's gotta be a reason that he got where he was at that point. Um, and I had found him on, well, I read his Wikipedia page while he was actually still in jail because it said his sentencing. And so I had found him through the court system. I had found what the court number was, the sentence, where he was sentenced. And at the time you could only, if you had his full name and his birthday, send a message. And they couldn't tell you which correctional center he was in. They just said, send us a message. If we find the name and the birthday match up, we'll give him the message. And if he wants to respond, he will. So I I just wrote this letter and sent it and had my fingers crossed. And then his mum called and said, he got your letter. He was having trouble with the phone. He really wants to talk to you. And we became pen pals for the couple of months that he had left of his sentence. And then we ended up meeting him in person about five months after he got out. And what I love about the film is that we were so lucky with the timing. And like with Sam, we were so lucky with the timing. If we had approached Sam a few years before, he wasn't ready in his life to be sharing it. He hadn't mm -hmm. had those lessons yet. And same with Joe. And, um, and so by meeting him at that point, the documentary shows over like a two or three year period his journey to redemption and his journey of recovery which i think is so important to show that where he went but also where he is now and so i'm really excited for people to see this documentary and like with life after flash we show the makings of flight of the navigator as well because that's kind of what i'm trying to do with these life after films is have a celebration of the film but also this human story about a character from it and it's remarkable I, I, about half of it rough. I mean, you could, you, you edit it so you can tell me more than me, but I think it's about half of the running time is dedicated to how this movie came to be. And you got so many people to talk about this movie. You've got, I've got a list here. You've got, you've got the director, Randall Kleiser. Uh, you've got casting people. You've got effects people. You've got producers. You've got the writer, the, the story creator. Um, and then you've got so many of the cast members as well. You've got Veronica Cartwright, who's amazing. You've got Cliff DeYoung. You got Dr. Johnny Fever, Howard Hesseman in this documentary. It's wonderful. I, just, I have to do a shout out to Randall because he was actually 
very instrumental in getting 95% of the cast because he was still connected. And so he was the one that organized the reunion and he was the one that helped us organize that screening at the Egyptian that you see in the film. Um, and he just kind of emailed everyone and said, this is what we're doing. Do you want to be a part of it? And um, so he, and he's now on board as executive producer, which is totally weird because I grew up loving his films and mm -hmm. to be able to just call him and go, oh, hey, can you watch a cut of the edit? You can tell me what you think. And I mean, it's too weird, but uh, I was very, very lucky with the people that, that agreed to be in the film because I think, you know, it's interesting hearing them not only talk about their time on set, but also their reaction to when they heard about Joey robbing a bank. And so you yeah. have this deeper connection with them as people as opposed to the characters they played. Yeah, I didn't know how much we wanted to say, but you just said like the the star of Flight of the Navigator ultimately robbed a bank. And yeah. it's I mean, you know, if you do Google him, you I mean that's yes. a headline that comes up. So it's Yes. It, so it's a big it is a redemption story. And you you know, Life After Flash is kind of a redemption story too. So now this is this theme. You talk about being in the right place at the right time, getting these people at just the right time. Um that's that's two films back to back that are really i mean i'm watching this movie and it's tapping into the, the nostalgia of childhood because we never as far as i know there's really no documentary or even like a behind the scenes for the, the making of the flight of the navigator yeah, so not seeing... extensively i think the new blu-ray had like a few interviews and stuff but nothing extensive that you nothing know. like what you've put together with people reflecting on it so it's the nostalgia connection and the people talking about what makes it special and then seeing the the journey i mean for lack of a better word of this of this man and how he came to this point and um i mean just constant goosebumps and then like of course there's multiple times in the movie i'm just like oh. <laughs> this is very emotional it really is yeah. um so and I, again i want to use the word empathy because you're there's a tone and you you do this thing with the cutting too where we go from like joy nostalgia childhood happiness and then it's just like bam you there's this cut and it's just like whoa and it feels like the air is sucked out of the room and but there's so there's such empathy there's such warmth there's such forgiveness and humanity in this and it's uh it's really remarkable i want to i want to thank you for what you've been able to, to well, bring thank to you this. that's that means a lot you know you're kind of trying to learn as learn as you go with the process because with the documentary you don't know what the story is really until you started and even after the first interview, like Joey is so open, like yeah. that interview where he's so emotional, that was the first interview we did with him. And he just had all this bottled up and it was a way for him to release it. But after that interview, um, myself and Ash, who produced it, it was just the two of us shooting. And so I think you, like it, I like that it feels like it's kind of us hanging out with a friend, mm -hmm. chatting and, um, but we said like, we don't know how this is gonna end. Like, it's so easy with addiction. What if he, what if he relapses? What if he, yeah. you know, gets in trouble again? And so it was this strange dynamic of wanting him to do really well, documenting it as we went, but not knowing where it's gonna go. There's um, even a line from his mom, cause you, you talk to his mom and she says like, you know, I, I think he's, I think he's better now. I don't think he wants to go back to that place. And she's like, I hope he doesn't, I, I hope yeah. that. So that reflects the feelings of everyone involved. Um, but this is happening now. Like this is current. This is like hot off the presses. How can people see this? How can people get involved with uh, getting their hands on this? Well, the discs are supposed to arrive at my house Friday. So currently you can, oh, it's so exciting. You can pre-order. So lifeafterthenavigator.com. You can pre-order. We have these little like little crew patches and 50% off shipping if you pre-order before the discs arrive. Um, and then it'll be on Amazon rental purchase from, I think the 9th of December and then Amazon prime and other platforms from 1st of February. But you know, I ship them all out. So if you want a signed copy, I'll write a little note, like, you know, it's all part of the personal touch, but it is literally hot off the press and we're doing, um, screenings for backers and the cast and crew soon. So some people haven't even seen it who are in it. So it's like super, super new. Um, so I'm really excited about how people react to it. Well, I'm grateful that I got to see it. Thank you for, for helping me see it. And I'm going to put a link to where people can go follow all this in the description of the video. But let's see, scroll under us and it'll be under, under us in the video description. Um, it's very exciting. And is there, is, can you, is there anything to talk about that maybe like 
work is, like in progress? There is. There's well, there's a few in the works that I'm not going to say yet, but it is going to be a series. So Life After will continue. The next one we actually started production on is Life After Atreyu, which is on the Neverending Story and looks at Noah Hathaway and his journey since the Neverending Story and obviously his role as Atreyu. We had started filming, but obviously lockdown has hindered that slightly, but I've started editing that with the footage that we have shot. And then when we can travel again, we'll start, we'll continue filming. So I'm again, super excited for that one because again, like Neverending Story is such a classic film. And so I'm very, I'm looking forward to celebrating that in the same way I've done these other ones. That's going to be wonderful. And there's an interesting connection to the never ending story in the the life after the navigator documentary because there's a there's a crossover there. I won't spoil it for people, but and I didn't know that. He when yeah. he told me that, I got goosebumps. I was like, "What? It's crazy." I, I know. Like, and then there's a clip and you're like, "Oh, no, there it is." Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, listen, yeah. this is this is tremendously exciting and uh, we're going to do all we can here at Serial at Midnight to help spread the word about these documentaries because it's it's preserving the past, it's looking at the past in a way that is important. Preservation is important. Appreciation is important and, and unironic appreciation. You know, there's so much irony right now. We really love the, the genuine look at this stuff, but also the focus on the lives, the people involved and how um, some of these paths have been you know, a lot of ups and downs, but uh, it's ultimately such a relatable human story that I think we can all invest ourselves into. And part of that is because of the job that you've done as the filmmaker. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And I, I love the support and I'm so pleased that you liked the film. I'm a, I yeah. loved it. I loved thank it. Thank you. <laughs> that means a lot. <laughs> so where, where can people follow you? This is a, a good opportunity to just put it all out there. Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, I guess my Insta, my personal Instagram, I, I kind of set up a life after movies Instagram, but I haven't done anything with it yet. Um, <laughs> so Lisa N Downs is my personal Instagram. And okay. then Facebook is life after the navigator. Flash is life after the navigator. Twitter is navigator movie. Um, Flash is life after flash on Twitter. So you can kind of find me through all those little avenues. Okay. And, very independent like i've said so it's me replying and it's me messaging and it's me posting and it's me shipping out the disc so you know just message and, and that'll be me <laughs> at the other end independent creation is so important we're a big proponent of it here at serial at midnight independent I mean, it's the future it's everything and it's so important to support you know, individual voices, independent voices that are stepping out there and doing it themselves now more than ever i think so congratulations and uh much future success to you. Thank you very much. Thank you for taking the time for this interview. Guys, thank you for watching. Uh, again, links to all of these, all those follow links in the description of this video. Go check out the documentary. Head over to that website. Lisa, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. All right, guys, take care. And until next time, we will catch you later.